Hi, my name is Dan Clark, and I was born and raised in the Jehovah's Witnesses till I was uh, 40 years old. And I've been out now for 12 years, and I've written a book called Eyewitness, The Shocking Insider Story of Jehovah's Witnesses. And it's my memoir of how life looked to me as a Jehovah's Witness, born and raised for 40 years, and also my journey out. And uh, in this second video here, I uh, talked about, and what I want to talk about is how to get the hooks out. In the first video that I just did, there's actually, this is a two-part video, the first one being uh, how people get hooked by the Jehovah's Witnesses. And just briefly, a brief overview of that is, you know, there's a conversation, there's uh, some validation, there's people wanting to know truth, and uh, the Witnesses come with some answers, and then there's a tipping point and wham, uh, we're hook, line, and sinker into the Jehovah's Witnesses. And it happens very, very fast, faster than you'd realize. So today, in this video, I want to talk about if you know somebody who's studying with Jehovah's Witnesses that may be not too far gone, or, or somebody that's been in a long time, and you think they may want to get out, or they're maybe inquiring how to get out, or you got somebody that just studied that just might be hooked a little bit, um, I want to talk to you today about how to get those hooks out of your precious family, relatives, or people that you know. It's, uh, it's an interesting process, but I just want to give you a, a shot at it, uh, how somebody got the hooks out of me. Uh, when you catch a fish, a literal fish, it's got a hook in its mouth. And what you want to do is you don't want to hurt the fish. You want to gently grab the fish and you want to find out, you maybe want to open its mouth and you want to find out where that hook is. And you want to reach in there and you want to gently just kind of wiggle it, move it a little bit and detach it and then put it back in the water quickly. Well, that's very similar what you do with people is you sit down with them. First, first of all, if you know somebody's studying, if your child is studying, you want to intervene right away. I mean right away. If you see a watchtower laying around, if you see one of their uh, literatures, Paradise, a Revelation book or something like that, you want to intervene right away and you want to cut it off immediately because that's what they're going to do to you. That's what they do to your family immediately within the second study uh, with Jehovah's Witnesses after they talk about the Paradise and the Earth and all these things. They tell you, cut your family off. They're going to discourage you from studying. They're part of Satan's world. Jehovah's trying to plant a wonderful seed in you. You're one of his own. Cut them off. So you need to do the same thing. You need to cut them off immediately. If this is in the earlier stages, you see a watchtower, you see witnesses coming over regularly to a house, and it's your friend. Walk over there. Cut it if you can. Try to put some space in between. Because what happens is the mind gets engaged. and. It's, it's taken over by this organization very, very rapidly. Um, if somebody has already bought in, say your child has bought in and, and you feel like there's some distance being created between you and your son, you and your daughter, your uncle, Tom, whoever, uh, you feel there's, there's this void that's happening and you don't feel that close anymore. What you want to do is you want to go up to them and you want to say, hey, what's happening? What's going on in your life? Um, try to encourage him to share uh, some of his teaching with you. What, what is it he's learning? What is it that's got him hooked already? What ideology, what idea has he bought into? Is it Jehovah's name? That God's name is Jehovah? Is it the paradise earth? Is it the Bible says don't take blood? What is it? Find out what the hook is that's very crucial. So you do this by just a very nice conversation, just like one of the ones that the Jehovah's Witnesses will have with you. You sit down with them and say, what are you learning? Are they teaching you anything good? And he says, yeah, yeah, you know what I found out? I found out God's name is Jehovah. Oh, really? Oh, cool. And he'll show you in the Bible. Oh, here's God's name, Jehovah. And I, by the way, I have one of their Bibles, which is all full of Jehovah. So. You say, oh, that's interesting. Wow, what else have you learned? And now you just found one of his hooks, see? So you write down that hook, Jehovah. God's name is Jehovah. You write that down. What else have you learned in there? Well, you know, I've learned, you know, that we're not supposed to take blood. The Bible says don't take blood. And you say, okay. You write down blood. 
And these are his hooks. These are unique to each individual. Every person that's, that's studying with Jehovah's Witnesses will have maybe a little bit different hook that they really like and is kind of bought into. So what you do as a friend is you don't alarm them right then. You go home and get on the internet and you look under God's name and you see that there's a hundred names and you write them, you don't know, you write several of them down. And the next time you see them, you say, well, did you know there's a lot of names to God? You say Elohim, I don't know all the names, but there's, there's lots of them and they mean different things. But there's lots of names, Jehovah, Yahweh, and it goes on and on. I think there's a list of like 50 names for Jehovah. And you say, you know, isn't that interesting? It's, it's actually interesting that God has about 50 names, actually. And they go, really? And you say, yeah, and you show them. And then he's like, oh, well, you just may have pricked that, that hook loose just a little bit. You may have just knocked it loose a little bit. He'll say, well, what was I buying into here? And his mind starts clearing up. Or he says, the blood. You know, well, it says right here, you know, abstain from food sacrifice to idols and from blood. And so you've went home and you've done a little research on the internet about the blood and you look it up and you read the whole thing. And what it says is that the Jews were preaching. This preaching work started and they started going out and the Jews started preaching circumcision and they crossed over into Gentile territory. And what happened? The, G the Gentiles were eating food sacrificed idols and drinking the blood. So a dispute broke out, it says, amongst them. And they went to the older men. And the older men said, you Jewish people quit preaching circumcision, but be circumcised from the heart. Be single focused on the Christ. And you Gentiles, for the sake of stumbling your Jewish brothers, abstain from food sacrifice to idols and from blood. So you take this to your buddy and you say, hey, or your son or your daughter, or who's ever studying. And they say, did you know that, that scripture, you know, you mentioned that blood, you know, I looked that up the other day. Did you know there was a dispute and the Jews were preaching circumcision and the, and the Gentiles were, were preaching, uh, were, were drinking the blood and, the, and, and they were uh, discouraging one another. There was a dispute broke out. And uh, so it was for the sake of stumbling the brothers. He told the Jews, don't preach circumcision. You're stumbling your brother. And you Jew and you Gentiles, quit drinking blood. You're stumbling your brother. It's no different than drinking in front of an alcoholic and so on and so forth. Now we all know blood's unclean and you know you can get diseases when you transfer it and that sort of thing. But blood to save your life is a whole nother thing. Is a whole nother thing. And uh, but they literalize it, the Jehovah's Witnesses. So what happens is you share this with your friend. Did you know it was for the sake of stumbling your brother as opposed to not say, taking blood to save your life? Oh, I, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Well, you've just gently prodded another hook out. Well, what happens is just as when you're hooked, three, four, five, six things tips you and gets you hooked, the same thing can happen the other way. Three, four things that are prodded loose can unhook you. Just the same way. You say, wait a minute, I better back off here. I'm, I'm going a little bit too quick here. I'm diving in a little bit too quick with both my feet. So just as the process works one way, when we're validated and we have enough references, we buy into anything, the same thing happens the other way. When there's enough evidence of contrary to what they're teaching you, you can pull the hooks out the other way. And that's what you might have to do. And the other thing I would say, here's another thing. If you've been a witness for a long time and you've seen these prophecies go by, if you were part of the group that were waiting for the end to come in 1975 when the witnesses prophesied that and it didn't come and you went into denial and you just said, well, you know, they're right and I just got to follow and I just put my blinders on and, and I just follow blindly and they have some new prophecy and the light got brighter and we went to the assembly and they gave me new truth. Um, well, that happened to me in... Uh, in the 80s, 90s. What happened was the, the watchtower and everything, the prophecy then was the end was gonna come 70 or 80 years from 1914, which would put it in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s. The end was gonna come. Well, all of a sudden the watchtower changed. Well, my internal GPS, the God-given compass that we all had said something's wrong. Something's wrong. It said, this is not the truth. What do they mean? You know, it's, 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 it's not 70 or 80 years anymore. That's what they said. The watchtower started changing. 
And it says, well, the generation that we know, it wasn't a generation as we know it now. And, and everything changed. The watchtower changed. And everybody rushed to the assembly. And there's new light. Well, instead of me this time closing my eyes after watching my dad die uh, in the 70s of, you know, waiting for the end to come and fix his health and everything, I, I took off my blinders and I said, wait a minute. They said that this world was going to end 70 or 80 years after 1914. So we all, you know, everybody rushed to the assembly and they say, Jehovah's given us new light. We got new light. Well, wait a minute. This light that comes down, that comes into the organization, into the watchtowers, that said it was 70 or 80 years is now changed? Truth is now changed? No, it's either true or false. And so this truth that came in changed is now false. So God gave us a false idea? God gave us a false truth to believe for a time, and now he says, I put more light on it, and that truth's wrong. Throw away the Revelation book. Throw away the Paradise book. Throw away anything to do with this prophecy. I tried to get a Revelation book a while back, and they said, why do you want one? It's out of print. Truth is out of print? Truth doesn't hold up on its own? Well, those were some of the reasons. So what happened was this voice came up from within and said, this is wrong. This is wrong. Well, I had a choice right then. I could deny truth and lose a part of myself forever, or I could embrace this, this truth that was trying to speak to me, this Christ within that was trying to speak to me, try to guide me. It was my compass. If I would have denied that, that compass, I may have been lost in the forest of Jehovah's Witness ideology forever. Lost in the forest of Jehovah's Witness ideology forever. But you know what? I listen to it. And that's what I would tell any one of you who's a Jehovah's Witness, any one of you who's, who's feeling sad, feeling like you may have been lied to, and you, and you push it down and you say, no, I, I can't go there. I threw the watchtowers the very first thing. I, I wrote about it in my book. I threw the watchtowers. And I said, this isn't the truth. And I picked them back up. And I said, oh, man, I'm so sorry. This is Jehovah's Organization. I couldn't do that. Well, anyway, long story short, I didn't deny that reality anymore. I decided I was going to take my hooks out and I was going to examine everything under the light of reason. I was going to pull everything up and take a look, square look at it right on. And I looked at that name Jehovah and I looked at the blood and I looked at all of these different so-called truths and before I knew it, I was totally free, totally free of a shame-based, angry God, shame and fear-based religion, totally free, totally free to experience the the land of flowing with milk and honey. Jesus said, I've come so that you could have life, this life, and have it in abundance. So I embrace that, and I have had an abundance in this life. And since I've been here, I've started my own company, I've become a painter, an artist. I've done so many miraculous things. I've, I've really tasted this wonderful life and enjoyed it, and it's been wonderful. Yes, the world is crazy. Yes, there's a lot of bad going on. But can I do anything about it? Yes. I can go out and love. And I can go out and, and help somebody. I don't, I don't want to be like the prodigal son on this side of the road saying, oh, we have the truth and they don't. And they deserve what they got coming to them because they don't know Jehovah. That's pharisaical. Go over and give the guy a hand. Give the guy a hand up. That's what Jesus said. Prove you're my, you're my, uh, my son, my daughter. Prove it. Walk with me. Love your neighbor as yourself. Not love them by shoving watchtowers and wakes down their neck. Love them. Love them. Offer them a hand up. Give them a couple dollars. Help an orphan. Give some money to a charity. Serve. Service. That's what Jesus was asking us to do. To the fact that you've done this to the least of me, you've done it to the greatest. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. And if, if you'd like a copy of my book, it's it's really cheap and it's downloadable through www.lifeafterreligion.com forward slash radio. And if you'd like to be a part of my documentary where I'm interviewing people about life after religion, life after religion, um, life after the Jehovah's Witness religion and how you've prospered and how you've been blessed, I'd like to interview you. I'm going to do a, a documentary. And uh, you can leave a, uh, an email on my website, transformyesican.com. That's transformyesican.com. And I would love to interview you. 
because you know what? People need to know inside the Jehovah's Witnesses that there's life outside. They're terrified. They've been told not to look. They've been told they're gonna turn into a pillar of salt like Lot's wife. They've been told it's only here. This is the only thing. Um, if you look out there, you're like the pig. And it's not true. It's an absolute lie. And, the, and it's, it's a fear and shame-based organization. So anyway, I just wanna leave that with you. Leave me an email on my website, Transform Yes You Can. And anyway, that's the, to the best of my ability how to get the hooks out. But the main thing is don't get them in there in the first place. Find out if your son or daughter is studying with the witnesses. Find out, look for evidence, see if there's a magazine sitting around. And, and snuff it out, snuff it out quick. Put some distance in between their studying and the witnesses and help them reason. Help them go on to the internet and take a look at all the history and all the prophecies and all the changes and ask them, does God's truth change? Is God's everlasting truth change? I don't think so. I think truth is truth. Gravity is gravity. The sun is the sun. The earth is the earth. Truth is truth. And truth will always be the truth. Truth is unchanging. So how dare them call themselves the truth? So anyway, take them on the internet. Show them the many changes. Go on the many sites out there. Free minds. There's, there's lots of them. And show them the history. And, and, and do it quickly. Don't waste a lot of time because the longer they're in, the more indoctrination they'll be getting, the more the scale will be tipped, the more closed off the world will be. It literally, they close off the world. So anyway, just want to leave that with you. Thank you. And again, my name is Dan Clark, and I look forward to hearing from you. And any other questions you have, just leave them on that site, Transform Yes I Can, and I'd be happy to answer them for you. Thank you very much.